Welcome back to the Bible Podcast. My name is Dale Miller, and on the Bible Podcast, we elevate the Word of God to the throne of our heart, its rightful place. I declare Jesus Christ my first love, and I invite you to do the same as well today. On the Bible Podcast, we remind you that half truth is still a lie. Good intentions will not save you, and you can be sincerely wrong. And it's not going to make it right on the day of judgment. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell to get all and more of my Bible podcast content. Thank you for tuning in today. Today, we're going to discuss what adopting in your mind perception about being saved. Many people are swirling in this uh, mystical perception of adopting a mindset of what is required to be saved. And on the Bible podcast, this podcast was created to eliminate the fog, to eliminate uh, the U-turns and the deceptions and delusions and doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. And so on the Bible podcast, we expose the counterfeit pastor. We expose the translation trapper. We expose the explain it away minister. The pinball wizard evangelist that pops scripture and gets the ding, 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 ding going in your mind and you adopt uh, uh, a delusional adoption of perception on what is required and what is the rule to be saved. So on the Bible podcast, we're sounding the alarm. We're sounding the trumpet of the apostles doctrine. Who better to trust, who better to cling to than 12 men who Jesus handpicked, valued, restored after he came out of the tomb and for 40 days told them the things pertaining to the kingdom of heaven. And you know, one of those things would be how to enter the kingdom of heaven. What was the rule and what was required? Okay, and we're going to discuss what was required and what was the rule. But first, we want to go over what you may have adopted as salvation. Does this sound familiar? Everybody's going to be saved. It doesn't matter. God knows you're always going to be a sinner, but everybody goes to heaven. Everybody goes to heaven. Well, Jesus didn't look at it that way, okay? Jesus said this to the man without the robe on in the wedding garment. He said, bind this man and cast him into darkness. You see, that man without the wedding garment, while everyone else had to have a wedding garment and they put it on, he approached the wedding like he could present himself. He was in control. This was his idea of how to come into the wedding. And it didn't work and it didn't pass and he was cast into hell. Secondly, there's going to be a group of people. Jesus said, many will come to me in that last day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we use your name to prophesy, cast out devils, do many wonderful works? Jesus looks at them and says, away from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. So to have the adopted mind that everybody's going to go to heaven, God understands, and it's going to be, well, we've just disproved that adoption mindset that everybody goes to heaven because Jesus discusses to his disciples and preached and proclaimed, uh, even, even if you didn't, even if you honored your father and mother above Jesus, you weren't fit. For the kingdom of heaven. How about that? So Jesus makes it very clear in his ministry and in the gospel writings what is required and what is the rule. And so that's what we're focusing in on. And many people that adopt the mindset that everybody saved are also walking in fog, walking in delusion, and fooling themselves through the influence of doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. That is a fact. That is a reality. Okay. They don't spend time studying the word of God to show themselves approved unto God. They don't value the word of God as the word of God, because if you do, you're in agreement with me. 
Jesus didn't look at everybody goes to heaven. He did not preach that. Okay. All right. So what about this mindset that the thief on the cross is how you're going to live your life. And then right when you're ready to get electrocuted in the electric chair or hit head on by a semi driver or whatever, live your life in sin. And right before they pull the plug on the, the, um, uh, the ventilating system that's keeping you alive, you're going to breathe out, Jesus, save me. Okay, well, let me say this to that person who dreams up that adopted mindset, that that represents point zero 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 to infinity one of the reality. People love to bring up a scenario of whatever they can dream up and say, God would throw someone in hell who was this, that, or the other, and they whip up, they whip up their imagination, they whip up a .0002 infinity one and say, God's going to, well, let me tell you something, that's childish, that's immature and adolescent to think that way, okay, that, that's, and, and, and it's, it's never addressed, you know, what Paul says is even nature itself tells you there's a God, okay? And you're not going to walk through life uh, committing crime and, and not suffer the consequences, okay? And the thief on the cross was suffering the consequences of his life. And you want to go that way? Well, you're not even, you can't. They don't crucify people anymore. As a matter of fact, most people want to go to jail because it's three meals a day, you get to work on your fitness, and you can have your education paid for and become a lawyer, and uh, and then work your way right out and get acquitted, and 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 then sue the state and those around that put you in jail uh, because you found all the loopholes. I mean, it's you know, it's 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 just just how that that's how it works. Okay, but but see, we're not talking about the uh, lifestyle of a criminal. The, the thief on the cross was under the Old Testament. When he looked at Jesus, he confessed that he was a sinner and he wanted a Savior. Jesus was his lamb, and that's what the, was required in the Old Testament, a confession and a lamb sacrifice. That's why the thief went into heaven. When Jesus said that to him at the 11th hour of the day, or 11 a.m., Jesus didn't die until 3 p.m. So he went under the Old Testament law and requirement and the rule. So you're never going to go the way the thief of the cross because that's not the rule and requirement anymore. The Old Testament was done away with. Okay. But many people in today's deception, delusion, and counterfeit churches preach, just do what the thief on the cross did. Many of your satellite ministries, global ministries teach, just do what the thief on the cross did, confess and believe. Well, no, he needed a lamb, that was Jesus, and, and he needed to confess, that was required in the Old Testament covenant. Jesus did that away uh, by saying it is finished, he would already be under the Old Testament requirement. When Jesus said it was finished, the Old Testament was done away with. Jesus establishes the New Testament when his apostles are filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Be careful what you're allowing your mind to adopt as salvation, okay? Uh, if it's not the apostles' doctrine, you're, you're off, okay? Paul said this, if I or an angel preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. Be aware, you better know the apostles' doctrine, the truth, the oracles, the rule, what is required. And we see it not just preached, but practiced and proclaimed through the book of Acts and fortified and established uh, as the one common salvation in the church letters. How about that? All right. So in adopting a mindset that just confess and believe, well, you know, devils believe and devils confessed and devils had their prayers answered. Are they going to be in heaven? Of course not. But we're going over on the Bible podcast, adopting the mindset that many counterfeit churches, counterfeit pastors, uh, counterfeit evangelists, um, 
uh, translation trappers and tumbleweed saints promote every day at work in their community to one another, their neighbors, and they themselves have not obeyed the apostles' doctrine. All right? So be careful. Be aware. Devils confess. Devils believe. Devils had their prayers answered in the gospel, but that doesn't mean they're going to be saved. Now, once saved, always saved. Is that your mindset? Well, I'm going to go to church, confess, and then I'm going to live, and, and I, I'm not going to pay attention. I'm going to live kind of recklessly. I'm going to enjoy the spoils of my flesh because I'm once saved, always saved. Um, well, what that does is that, that puts L Lucifer, who becomes Satan, okay, back in heaven. He was saved once, wasn't he? Yes. And he was under the name Lucifer. Then he becomes Satan. And now he's the dark prince of this realm. Okay. Well, once saved, always saved. If you get it, he gets it. Come on. No, that ain't going to happen. Satan has sealed the deal when he rose up in heaven and did not keep his first estate. All right. So once saved, always saved. Jesus even denotes that. In the book of Revelations, in the first three chapters of Revelation, he said your name can be removed out of the book of the Lamb's book of life. Uh, okay. And he said, he that endures to the end shall be saved. So be careful what you're adopting from what you're listening to and being influenced by in these counterfeit churches. Because if they don't preach the apostles' doctrine, they're living in a lie. They're proclaiming a deception, a delusion, and doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. It's just the reality of this realm. Okay? Uh, what about the Romans road? Many churches run to the book of Romans and tell everybody, look, all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You're gonna, every, your whole household's going to be saved. Okay? Well, they don't properly understand uh, that that book was written to a church that had started after Pentecost, Strangers from Rome, Acts chapter 2. You can look that up. The Romans that were there and obeyed, did you hear that? They, the Romans that were there obeyed Peter and followed the Apostles' Doctrine. Then they took that message back home to Rome, over 2,000 miles from Jerusalem, and started a church. Paul wrote that letter 25 to 30 years after the church had already been started. And not only did they obey the apostles' doctrine, but so did Paul. So, you got to be so careful. And Paul even admonishes the Romans for being baptized in Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 6, he even compliments Peter in the closing chapter of Romans chapter 6 when he said, uh, I praise God you were all sinners, but you became saints, and you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was once delivered you. Praise God who delivered it. Peter did. Yes. Okay, so be very careful what you're adopting, and we're just going over on the Bible podcast, how to avoid missing the door of heaven. You don't want to... Uh, miss the door of heaven, but Satan, who is in the field, in the yard, and on the porch, has created so much counterfeit delusion and apostasy doctrines using uh, counterfeit pastors, translation trappers, the tumbleweed saint, the pinball wizard evangelist, huh, okay, and all of this entertainment, all of this illusion and deception keeps you from entering the door of heaven, which is required and is the rule. Jesus said, if you come in any other way, you're a robber and a thief. So, and and Jesus said, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. Beware of the greedy pastor. Beware of the, the um, nonsense, narcissistic driven minister and the delusional saint who just tumbles around and collects trash in their spirit and then just believes any of these things that I've mentioned get you into heaven. No, 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 no. No, uh-uh. 
And remember this, remember the narcissistic Christian who says they'll always be the victim of their own self-sabotaging. They're always going to live in sin. They're always going to be, uh, you know, struggling with addiction. And they, they just have to embrace the repeat offender lifestyle, okay? And, and, they, and they practice no change in their heart. You see, all of this capsulates what's available to you to dive into and continue to live in sin, continue to miss the door of heaven, continue to live in the field and be, continue to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. But on the Bible podcast, we bring you back to ground zero and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've never considered the, the apostles doctrine. Most Christians that I run into and say, have you obeyed the Apostles' Doctrine? They're like, what is that? I've never heard of that. How can that be possible? How? When, when orators and satellite ministries and global ministries and mega churches have doctors and orators of renowned status of study and have traveled the, 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 the globe to swell up their uh, anointed privilege in the in the knowledge of God, but yet they have never heard of the Apostles' Doctrine. How is that possible when it's right here in the book you claim to be the Word of God and you never you never saw it on the Bible podcast? It was this podcast was created to to elevate the unlearned to elevate the growing Christian, and, and to deliver deceived believers who have followed all of the false adopting mindsets to salvation that, we ju that I just mentioned, okay? We want to elevate the awareness of the Apostles' Doctrine because each one of you have a desire to know the truth and to obey the truth, praise God. And these were the oracles of heaven that were given to Peter in Matthew 16 that was established and built back up in him in the 40 days after Jesus' ministry when he came out of the tomb. And then he commanded them to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the other most parts of the world. And when Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost, along with the 120 that were with him, Peter tells the crowd that was doubting and shouting it down, what meaneth this? These men are drunk. He said, no, this is that which was spoken of the prophet Joel. Peter knew his scripture. They all knew the scripture, the 3,000 crowd. They didn't come from over 2,000 miles just to, to, to have a few slap on the backs and go home. No, they were there to get right with God. They were there to carry out the oracles that Moses had established with them through the oracles of God to Moses, to the people of God. Do not devalue anything in these pages. Elevate it. Realize it and relish in the fact that these pages were uh, all put together by the will and mind of God. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Come on, don't you devalue the word of God one iota. Study it. Show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. It can be wrongly divided. And that's where Satan comes in and swirls up 4,200 different persuasion and voices speaking into your ear that you don't have to uh, be filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't need baptized. That's just an outward sign of an inward commitment. This is nothing more than doctrines of devils and seducing spirits and total narcissistic nonsense. Come on now. Come on. Okay. Because we're going to nail this when we look at the apostles and their actions. Praise God. If you have faith and belief, then your belief will carry out the actions that show you truly do believe and that you're willing to be obedient to the apostles' doctrine, which is the rule and which is required at the door 
of the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. So we're. This is why the Bible co- podcast was uh, created, and we've been on the YouTube now for over a year, and we're so grateful that you've tuned in. I want to say, would you please hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell to get more and all of my Bible podcast content. So we're going over what you may have adopted as the plan of salvation. And we just want to come over with the Apostles' Doctrine pin needle and pop that bubble and show you the reality of the rule and what is required. Okay? Because if Satan can have you think and believe you're saved when you're not and you have not obeyed the Apostles' Doctrine, he's got you. You're in the you're in the trap, okay? And Satan ain't playing games. He's come down with an M.O. to kill, steal, and destroy, and deceive. And he can come as an angel of light. That's right. He can blind your mind and have you thinking that you're believing that you've done everything right. And here I'm saying, have you obeyed the Apostles' Doctrine? And you're like, I've never heard of that. So we're going to pop that bubble by exposing what you've been told what you've been uh, brought in under, which is false doctrine, doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. That's right. Jesus, Jesus's church that he started in the Bible is the one I belong to. Jesus's church in the Bible never needed reformation. It never needed man's element of reformation. Remember, in Europe, there was a reformation time that broke away from the Catholic church. The Catholics claim that Peter is their first pope. Peter would not agree with that. They don't preach what Peter preached, praise God. So you got to remember, Satan is in this to deceive you, to get you to believe. And believe you me, people are the easiest to deceive. It's the truth. Jesus said, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. You've got to have a sense of discernment. You got to have a foundation that is built on the truth, so help you God, and the apostles' doctrine, and that way you're able to see navigate what is true and what is false, okay? And stick to the truth. Okay, no matter how set off or alone or discarded you become, Jesus knows what that's like. Okay? All right, so we're, we're just honing in on your focus, discipline, and commitment to the truth, to the Apostles' Doctrine, and we've mentioned all of these adopted mindsets that Christians are under who, who have never obeyed the Apostles' Doctrine. All right, so, um, but, but what we're going to discuss here today on the Bible podcast is the overwhelming evidence of not only faith and belief, was restored, Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and he said, you men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, hearken to my words. Folks, he got that authority from the Holy Ghost, from the oracles of heaven, and he was trained after his faith and belief was restored for 40 days. He got up in front of the masses of the Jewish people and said, you men of Judea and you all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, hearken unto my words. He wasn't starting a new religion or going to base something not on Jesus Christ. No, he was the spokesman in Matthew 16. Peter gave, Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That gives you authority and access. And this is what Peter was fulfilling. Praise God. So after he got done preaching, Joel, David, Jesus, They got convicted in the heart, pricked in the heart, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what must we do? Now, come on. Come on. The first time ever after the Old Testament was done away with, a group of people, 3,000 people, would look at Peter and the rest of the apostles and request, desire, demand what must we do? Now, if Peter would have used Joel, David, Jesus, and any other manipulating way to try to uh, make himself a lord over those people, 
and deceive them using scripture, they would have pounded him in the dirt. No, they were convicted and wanted to be right with God. Now think about that. For hundreds of years, they had obeyed the uh, uh, Mosaic law, and I'm talking about the 3,000 people that asked Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what must we do? All those years they poured into coming to Jerusalem, offering what was required, obeying the rule, to be accepted by God, and Peter stands in the door of Jerusalem and says, no, that's not going to work anymore. Think about that. Is it that overwhelming evidence that when they said to Peter, what must we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost you can't hear the projection of prophecy when he said, And this gift is unto you and your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You can't hear the prophecy of you getting the Holy Ghost because Peter promised it to you that it's a gift from God and it's coming to you in 2024 and beyond. Come on. You can't hear the prophecy. You can't see the door that Peter shut and said the Old Testament is done away. And he opens a new door and says, this is how you get right with God. You can't see it. You can't hear it. Oh my gosh. It's time to stop believing a lie. It's time to stop believing half truth is still a lie. It, good intentions won't save you. And you can be sincerely wrong, but it isn't going to make it right. And those people on the day of Pentecost could have said, eh, that's your interpretation, Peter. We don't believe you. Think of the seriousness. Think of the soberness of this moment that's recorded in your Bible. It's imperative that you obey the oracles of heaven, which were given to Peter from God Almighty through the mouth of Jesus Christ. Come on. Save yourself. Obey the apostles' doctrine. Come, come up on the rock. Jesus said, He that obeys my word, I'll liken to him as someone who built his house on a rock, and the storms and the winds came. And let me tell you, all these uh, uh, Reformation churches, yes, they, they, they falter. They're embracing perversion. They're embracing confusion. They're embracing nonsense and the delusions and the spirits of this world, which are perverted, which are, which are uh, non-binary, and any other term other than being a godly woman and a godly man. They're embracing everything else, and they're explaining it away. They're uh, uh, giving you a translation uh, about how God endorses all their nonsense. And then, you know, they're swirling in a blender of nonsense and narcissism and a devil's hell to be poured out into the devil's hell. And on the Bible podcast, we don't want you going through the door of a trap door. We want you coming through the door into the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. Paul said, if he or an angel preached any other gospel, let him be a curse. Paul said to the Ephesians, there's only one faith, one baptism and one God. How about that? How You can't explain that away. Not only did Jesus give Peter the, the oracles on what to tell the people on the day of Pentecost, how to come through the door and be obedient to the rule and requirement, but then read it for yourself in the ninth chapter of Acts from glory, from heaven. Jesus opened up the door of heaven and said, and, and, and said, hey, Saul, why are you kicking against, it's hard to kick against the pricks. And Saul said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus. It's hard to kick against the pricks. And he said, what do you want me to do? How about that? And from heaven, Jesus validates the apostles' doctrine, which he established before and gave to Peter, and Peter proclaimed it on the day of Pentecost. Paul would get up and be obedient to what is the rule and requirement. And when Ananias came to Saul, he said, Brother Saul, it's time to rise up and get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Paul spoke in tongues more than anyone. He told that to the Corinthian church. He told the Romans that him and the Roman church was all baptized in Jesus Christ. Overwhelming evidence that Satan's trying to blind your mind and keep you in a delusion and adopting the nonsense, the narcissism, and the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Because when we go back to the Bible, the common salvation that Jude wrote about, that was once 
delivered, the faith that was once delivered. Okay, once Jude was there when Peter unlocked the door to the kingdom of heaven and Jude was baptized by Peter in Jesus' name and he was filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why Jude could write in verse 20 that praying in the, he said, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. How can you build up your most holy faith if you don't speak in tongues? You can't. You must be born again. John 3 and 5, Jesus told that to Nicodemus. You must be born again of water and spirit. He told the Samaritan woman at the well, God looks for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise God, John chapter 7, Jesus said, He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this make he of the spirit, which they that believe should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Come on, I'm pouring out overwhelming evidence that they did not receive the Holy Ghost in the form of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance, the new birth experience, until Acts chapter 2, when they were obedient and were in the upper room, and the mighty rushing wind came in and filled the house, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Praise God. Don't listen to the explain it away, minister. Watch out for the counterfeit pastor. Look out for the pinball wizard evangelist. Beware of the tumbleweed uh, uh, Christian who's tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Okay? It's childish. It's adolescent. It's narcissism. They just want control, and they just want to line their, their pockets with your cash. That's it. They're hirelings. But here on the Bible Podcast, we want you to come through the door and be obedient to the Apostles' Doctrine. What better way than to be in agreement with the people Jesus picked? Come on. Come on. I mean, you, you're you going to want to go to heaven. Who are you going to see when you get there? Peter? What's Peter going to tell you? Hey, I got baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, so did all the apostles. And, and here's all the, all the nations. Look, this eight, Acts chapter 8, the Samaritan nation, baptized in Jesus' name. Peter and John went down, laid hands on them that they would receive the Holy Ghost. It's required. Praise God. And then Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, he was a good man. He had a memorial in heaven. Do you? Well, if you do, you should pay attention to Cornelius because an angel was sent to him and he sent to Joppa to get Peter. And when Peter came, he got he saw him get filled with the Holy Ghost and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You can't. It's overwhelming evidence. There's going to be no excuse. And what about after two missionary journeys? Paul's in his third missionary journey, and he finds John's 12 disciples. Oh, boy. They're believers. The Bible says he saw the believers and disciples. He walks up to them and says, have you got the Holy Ghost since you believed? Come on now. You need the Holy Ghost now that you're a believer. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need to look at the agenda. You need to look at the mind adoption of what you've allowed yourself to believe as the, the way to come in and meet Jesus at the door and come in and out of the kingdom of heaven. Because we're telling you there was only one way. Praise God. And narrow is the way. And the apostles established it through the oracles of Jesus when he gave it to them in 40 days after he came out of the grave. Praise God. And they obeyed. They tarried in Jerusalem, got filled with the Holy Ghost. Then they obeyed baptism in Acts chapter 2. The Samaritans, the Gentiles, Saul obeyed it. Okay? And, the, uh, and then you have the Jerusalem church started on Pentecost. The Jews. And then you got John's 12 believers. And, and then Paul said to the John's 12 believers, how were you baptized? It matters. It matters. Nowhere... And, and, you know, the Bible says when John's disciples heard this, when, when Paul said, John told you to believe on him that should come after him, that's on Jesus Christ. They didn't have a Bible debate. They didn't say, um, you know, who do you think you are? We followed one of the greatest prophets of all time. That's what Jesus said. No, 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 no. They didn't have any a squabble. They said, you know what? That's the truth. Let's get baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. And then Paul laid his hands. They spoke in tongues and prophesied spiritual gifts. They got the tongues. Then the gifts came. All right? That's just the truth. That's just the overwhelming truth and facts. And the book of Jude will back up that he obeyed Peter's baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost 
when he said, brethren, you, I have to give you all diligence that you contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. He was talking about the day of Pentecost when Peter baptized him in Jesus' name. Okay? This nonsense about the Romans road, just confess and believe, demons do that. But what Paul did say in Romans chapter 6, they were all baptized in Jesus Christ. Okay? And he compliments Peter's ministry in, in Romans chapter 6. Look at verse 17 when he says, I thank God you were all sinners, but you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was once delivered you. Who delivered it? Not Paul. Peter. 25 years before he wrote his Roman letter. Come on. Stop standing on sand. And, st and because it's not going to hold up. You can be sincerely wrong. Lord, I thought I thought the thief on the cross was the only way to come in. I'm wrong. I'm sincere. It's not going to help you on the day of judgment. You're not going through the door. Okay? You just believed a lie. You believed an illusion. You believed a deception, a doctrine of devil and seducing spirit. Look, already in heaven, there are a cloud of witnesses that have obeyed the apostles' doctrine. And they will stand in judgment against all of this foolishness. All of this narcissism, all of the doctrines of men, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. And they're going to say, well, well, I just believe the guy behind the pulpit. Wrong. It's not going to help you on the day of judgment. You need your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And, and what better way than to say, well, Dale, we don't believe you because uh, you're, you're just another voice on YouTube. We, okay, good, great. If that's, but I put in your brain, I put on the lobes of your brain the word, the name Peter, Paul, Jude, James, Matthew, Mark, Luke, all these men that obeyed the apostles' doctrine. Now nations, the Jewish nation obeyed the apostles' doctrine. The, the Samaritan nation obeyed the apostles' doctrine. The Gentiles obeyed the apostles' doctrine. Saul, who became Paul, obeyed the apostles' doctrine. John's 12 believers obeyed the apostles' doctrine. And you're going to tell me that doesn't add up to overwhelming evidence that that's what you should do, I should do? Oh my goodness, beware of your self-sabotaging. Beware of the lie you believe and convinced yourself that, no, all I can do is just believe and I can be a repeat offender. Uh, I'm once saved, always saved, the Romans wrote. All of this counterfeit. All right, all this counterfeit. These distractions. But we bring you back. That's why the Bible podcast was established, to elevate, because we're notoriously known and we're relentless about the apostles' doctrine. The apostles were notoriously known for preaching that way and for proclaiming that way to come through the door to the kingdom of heaven, okay? Your adoption paperworks are done when you're buried in the name of Jesus, Okay, were you buried in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins? Or were you baptized, Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Satan's got counterfeit baptism. He's got counterfeit, uh, you don't need to speak in tongues. It's not for today. It's done away with nonsense. I'm telling you, Satan is going to do everything he can to devalue, shame, guilt, minimize, explain away what is required and what is the rule. But this book makes no uh, uh, devaluing about what is required. It actually elevates you to your rightful place if you'll be obedient. If you will follow the apostles. What better confirmation for, your, for you and, and for me, I found, to follow the apostles. They were handpicked by Jesus. That's how much he valued him. And when they all forsook him, when he came out of the grave, he went after him. What better way to say, you know, Jesus must have believed something in Peter. He must have saw something in 120 that would obey from the Mount of Olives by going into the upper room. But they needed to be obedient. And Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do you love the Lord today? Sure you do. Have you been obedient to the apostles' doctrine? They were. That's what Jesus ordered them to obey. Come on. This is a living book. 
It's a spiritual book and you're a spirit being having a physical experience. Satan wants to put something in your life and experience in your life that robs you of your redeemed and, the, and going through the door into the household of God. Being on the porch isn't going to get you in the door. Being in the yard is not going to get you in the door. Being in the field is not going to put you through the door. But if you tarry too long out in the field, in the yard, and on the porch, you're deceiving yourself. You're allowing the explain it away minister, the counterfeit pastor, the translation trapper, the tumbleweed saint who's tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Okay, and all the 4,200 different persuasions in this realm, you, you can't deny that. But yet, the Bible podcast brings you back to reality. Reality. The apostles were handpicked by Jesus. He went after them after his resurrection. And for 40 days, he expounded on them the things pertaining to the kingdom of heaven, recorded in Acts chapter 1 by Luke. And then on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter began to preach, and he told those men, it's me that's got... Peter said, hey, I'm the one with the authority. You men of Judea and all ye in Jerusalem, hearken to my words. Jesus put that endorsement. And, and, and you're, willing, you're willing to take the endorsement of a mega church, a mega satellite ministry in your local town, and they don't preach what Peter required the Jews to obey. God help you. I pray in the name of Jesus that your mind is opened up to the truth of what is required, uh, handed to the apostles of Jesus, and they declared it to every nation under heaven, and they obeyed. Those that would gladly receive, obeyed being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Praise God, it's waiting for you. It's a gift. Thank you for tuning in to the Bible Podcast. We're going over the, the adopting of one's mindset on the perception of how to go into the kingdom of heaven. Now, once you have obeyed the apostles' doctrine, baptism, repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, you must live a holy life. You must, what Paul said, uh, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You must endure to the end. You must maintain yourself in a holy cleansed, non-toxic, narcissistic personality, character, and grow up in him. Grow up out of adolescence and immaturity. Grow up out of narcissistic behavior and, and hone in on the character as the spirit grows in you, a new nature of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise God. It's a wonderful a journey when you're holding on to the master's hands, when you're kneeling down and asking for his help and for his forgiveness. And it's wonderful to become obedient to what is the rule and what is required to enter the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. And so, you know, and so Jude found out by 70 AD, okay, Jude found out by 70 AD that he needed to write a letter and he had to go back to uh, uh, declaring what is required and what is the rule and, and, and to keep it straight because this is what he says. Beloved, I gave it all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. You see that? There wasn't 4,200 different persuasions. There wasn't any of these adopting mindsets of the thief on the cross, just confess and believe, once saved, always saved, Romans Road, God understands you'll always be a sinner, you'll always self-sabotage, you'll always be a repeat offender, you'll have no change, baptism isn't required, Holy Ghost, you don't need to speak in tongues, all this nonsense that Satan delivers in his realm, this is his realm, and he pours out fog and confusion and toxicity and narcissism. And narcissistic people love to go to church. They love to be the pastor. They love the adulation and the data boy club. They love the slap on the back. They love human validation. Okay, and be careful of that human validation desire that will adopt your mind to think, well, if I'm okay with a man, I guess I'm okay with God. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to be right with God before you're, you ever, you ever, you never entertain trying to be right with a man. You always entertain being right with God. You're right with God. You got nothing to worry about. Praise God. All right. You heard that on the Bible podcast. So mature up and maintain it. And so 
Jude is writing his letter 40 years after he's filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and he's trying to tell people, look, there was only one common salvation. He said, I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. What's he talking about? Day of Pentecost, my friend. The day of Pentecost was when the faith of heaven was required to be obeyed by and through the mouth of Peter to the Jewish nation, Acts chapter 8, the Samaritan nation, Acts chapter 9, the apostle Saul, Acts chapter 10, the Gentiles, and Acts chapter 19, the uh, John's 12 believers. Yes. Okay, do you see that? Do you see where seven, you know, uh, 40 years later, he, Jude is in a predicament where he's looking at the condition of society and the church, church, and he's like, holy mackerel, uh, we can't lose this common salvation. We've got to obey the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Okay, and he says this, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before ordained to this condemnation. They're not going to heaven. Okay, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and then he said, I will put therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward, destroyed them that believed not. You, what? Yes. Jude uses examples about people's disobedience to the faith, their disobedience to, uh, you know, uh, their morals in Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? And the possession of sacred things, okay? And how they all went to hell, how God destroyed them. Okay, beware of adopting the mind that Jesus is just a loving God. He understands you'll always be a sinner. You'll always be a repeat offender. You'll never live above sin. You're always going to fail God. That is a doctrine of devil and seducing spirit. How about getting, how about growing out of narcissism? How about getting filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name? And how about maturing to the, to the nature of Christ? Paul said this to the Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. How are you going to do that until you get down and have a mind overhaul? You, we preach on the Bible podcast that you press into the Word of God. We tell you that the Word of God is as sharper than two-edged sword. It's able to pierce the dividing us of soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and as a discerner of your thoughts and the intentions of your heart. And all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. There's no private interpretation of the word of God. It didn't come in by the will of man, but by holy men of God. Okay, as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost, they wrote this book. It's, this is a miracle that I'm holding in my hand. It's a miracle what the Bible you have on your lap or on your desk. Praise God. All right, so Jude, okay, Jude is telling us 70 AD, hey, look back to that day when we had the common salvation and the faith that was required to be obeyed and the rule it was to be saved. Now, I want you to go to Romans chapter uh, 6. Paul is writing this letter, Romans chapter 6 and verse 3, and he says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Okay, look at that. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, and like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Come on, that newness of life does not commit sin or, or say it's always going to be self-sabotaging, fail God. No, rise in newness of life. Praise God. And then read Romans 8, Romans 9. It talks about the Spirit of God that they were born in. You must be born again. Jesus said that to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Okay? Now, look in uh, uh, Romans chapter 6. This validates the Romans had obeyed Peter. Okay? And that's, and that's critical. So look at this. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. But God be thanked you were the servants of sin. Look at this. He's, he's thanking God they were servants of sin. But you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Who delivered it? Who delivered it? Paul was Paul was Saul, and he was holding the coats while they were stoning Stephen. How about you remember that? 
Stephen. They were stoning him, and Paul was holding the coats of them that killed him, S Stephen, okay? and But Paul, after his conversion, he obeyed the apostles' doctrine, okay? Then, <laughs> years later, he's writing to Romans, and he's complimenting Peter here. For he said, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was once delivered you. This is the doctrine Satan doesn't want your heart to know about. Woo, how about that? He doesn't want your heart to know about the Apostles' Doctrine. He doesn't want you to know about the repentance and baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, and you're going to know because you'll speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. He doesn't want you to know that, that form of doctrine that everybody obeyed. Acts chapter 2, 8, 9, 10, and 19. Overwhelming evidence for your confidence to come up on the rock that Jesus started. Belong to the, the rock that Jesus started because outside this fence where I stand on the rock and with the apostles and all the nations, there are wolves, dogs, adulterers, murderers, killers, liars, manipulators, narcissistic demons waiting to consume your adopted mind of doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. It's just the reality of this realm. So here Paul is telling the Romans, hey, you obeyed from the, that heart the form of doctrine which was once delivered you. Then he said this, being made free from sin. How about that? You can be freed from sin, freed from being um, uh, in captivity in Jesus' name. Okay? You're freed from sin. Ye became the servants of righteousness. Okay, praise God. That's so good. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Look at this, Galatians chapter 3. This is, remember the man in the who didn't wear a wedding garment when Jesus talked? And he said, friend, how did you get in here? Jesus said to the man without the wedding garment, friend, how did you get in here? And he stood speechless, okay? There's going to be no excuse. You don't come to the door of heaven and tell God how it's going to be. There will be no reformation ever when God says this is how it's going to be done. Never. It wasn't a reformation when Noah built the ark. There was no reformation when Moses received the law and the on the Ten Commandments and he, the orders to, to whip up and to build the tabernacle. There were no reformations. Nothing man could do to make it better or put air conditioning in here or over there or fickle things all up. No. There was no reformation when God gave David the plans to build the the temple that Solomon would build. No reformation. Jesus didn't start a church and declare it would need to be reformed in 325 AD. He didn't say that after the reformation of the Catholic Church, there's going to be a bunch of other churches that are going to finally figure out the truth. No, that is a doctrine of devil and seducing spirit. Europe had a reformation to control and manipulate through greed and narcissism and change the scriptures so they could control and murder you. And then you had it here in America when they sailed the, the ocean blue and landed here on the shores with the Geneva Bible. The Reformation took place here in America. And you have all this nonsense, confusion. That's not the mind of God. Who is the author of confusion? Satan. When Jesus spoke to Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, he eliminated all Reformation. Period. End of story. This is why the Apostle Doctrine is so critical to be obeyed. It is the rule and it is required to go to heaven. All right? And we're sounding the alarm. We're putting this into the lobes of your brain to consider to obey and love the Lord, follow his commandments if you love him, and be obedient to the apostles' doctrine. We submit this to you. We urge you to contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. Yeah, uh, and, and, and here, and, and, and to obey the form of doctrine which was once delivered to the Roman church on the day of Pentecost. Strangers from Rome were there on the day of Pentecost and they obeyed the oracles of heaven. Praise God. All right. Now in Galatians, I was telling you about the man without the wedding garment. Look what Paul says about baptism. He says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, he said this, for we are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, that sounds pretty easy. You know, many churches would, there's, there could be many churches birthed just on that scripture. There you are. But, but that wasn't the end of his thought. 
Look at verse 27. For as many as of you have been baptized into Christ. What? Yes, baptism is required. It's just not an outward sign of an inward commitment. That's nonsense. It's for the remission of sins. And Satan's going to try to devalue it using a counterfeit pastor, a translation trapper, a devaluing pinball wizard evangelist, or a tumbleweed toxic narcissistic saint. Come on, get back to your Bible. Obey, follow the steps of the apostles. Jesus valued them. Jesus appointed Peter. He appointed Paul. And he's he's appointed them. He didn't appoint you or Paul. Or he didn't appoint you and me, but he calls us to be obedient to what is required. All right, now look at this. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. See that? Put on the robe. How about that? The nature of Christ when you're baptized. You're, you're buried with him in death, and you come up in the newness of life. You put on the robe of Christ. That's what he's talking about. Come on. When Jesus looks at the many and says, Many will go into hell that say unto me, Lord, Lord, did we use your name, use your name, use your name. They learned how to use, they adopted a mindset that used the name of Jesus, but they never applied the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and their baptism, which left their iniquity in the eyes of Jesus on the day of judgment. He saw the iniquity. That's why he said, away from me, you worker of iniquity. It was the sin that was condemned, and they never had it remitted. Woo! Come on, get remitted. Get remission of sins and get baptized in Jesus' name. Okay, so we're talking about the robe. All right. All right, so you can read about uh, the crowd, all right? In Matthew 22, you can read about Matthew chapter 7. Seven is many will come unto me in that last day. Matthew 22 is the man without the robe, all right? Now look here. Look at, look at, what, look at 1 Corinthians. Look, let's go to 1 Corinthians and let's look at what Paul said to Corinthians about a name being pronounced over their baptism, okay? This is what Paul said to the Corinthians in the first book of the Corinthians, uh, chapter 1. Look at verse 10. He says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, especially when it comes to salvation, wouldn't you think? Okay, you all speak the same, same, same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye perfectly join together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Okay, what must we do to be saved? Here's the judgment. Repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost for the remission of sins. Come on. You can't make that up. And Paul's telling the Corinthians, hey, I want you to have the same mind and the same judgment. Well, when someone gets judged of being a sinner and they want to become a saint, what are you going to tell them? Just confess and believe? Are you going to tell them to do what the thief on the cross did? Are you going to tell them once saved, always saved? Are you going to show them the Romans road? Come on, because if you do, you're a liar. I'm sorry, you're a liar. And the doctrines of devils and seducing spirits are using you to put someone else in hell and give them the false illusion to give them the false adopting of the mind that they're pleasing God when they don't get baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. How dare you? And it's been under your nose this whole time. How dare you? You will be held accountable for what you share and what you coach people to do to come through the door and come through. Uh, and that's what Paul meant. Come on. He said, if I or an angel preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. Come on. I'm telling you, this is reality. This is the scary reality that many people don't want to look at because they just think, well, it's too hard. God understands. Oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. You know, you got to consider what Jesus did to achieve uh, our salvation. He never minimized it. He gave exactly what was required. He endured to the end. And so did these men who gave their lives, who were cut in half, beheaded, crucified upside down, boiled in oil, okay? Pierced through with swords and, and spears, ripped asunder. And we're going to say, oh, no, you know, it, got, it don't matter. You know, we, I mean, I'm just going to, I'm just going uh, to, I'm just going to do what the thief on the cross did. Oh my gosh. You're, you're in a toxic, narcissistic, delusional state. 
And I pray for you in the name of Jesus, you come out of that illusion of lies and manipulation and seducing spirit. Come out of that fog of deception, okay, in Jesus' name, and obey the apostles' doctrine, the rule, and what is required. And so Paul's pounding it down here for the first Corinthians, and he said, For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, that... Uh, uh, that, that them which are of the house of Chloe, that uh, uh, there were contentions among you. Now I say that every one of you say, I'm a Paul, I'm Apollos, and I am Cephas, and I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified uh, for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? Come on! Stop believing this nonsense of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Matthew was never baptized that way. Matthew didn't write his gospel till 25 years after his baptizing in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. And he spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Come on. Come on. You have no doctrinal example nor witness in this book, the Bible, of anyone being baptized, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But yet, it is the rule or it is what is obeyed among the satellite mega uh, boasterous churches. Satan doesn't care where you go, wh what you roll into church parking lot with your Bible. He doesn't care how long you've been going to church. He only cares if you've been buried in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. He only cares if you're speaking in tongues when the Spirit gives utterance. And that's the confirmation that Christ is in you. That's your seal of approval of what Paul wrote to the church letters. God seals you with the Holy Ghost. That's his approval over you. Many are called, few are chosen. Come on. Come on. Let's step up instead of stepping back. Step up into the Holy Ghost. Don't step back. Paul said if you draw back, he had no part with you. All right. Okay. In closing, let's go to Ephesians. And remember, uh, it's all about the name. Na Satan hates the name of Jesus. Demons hate the name of Jesus. And so he's created counterfeit baptism. And no one, everyone in the Bible was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. How about you? I was. I was baptized wrong in the Church of Christ for crying out loud. I went to Europe and a man with a passion and preached the apostles' doctrine, and I studied it for three months and came to this conclusion. I want my sins remitted. I'm going down in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. And so I did in 1987 on July 11th. Praise God. And I have that document with me to this day. Praise God. I want my name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and it is your and my own responsibility to keep it there. Praise God. Whatever you do, Make sure your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life and you get it pinned in when you've been obedient, when you get adopted, when you come through the door, you become a child of the kingdom of heaven. Baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll know because you'll speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Praise God. That's how the sorcerer knew the, Sar the Samaritans got the Holy Ghost. That's how Peter's friends knew that the Gentiles, they, for they heard them speak in tongues, not chill bumps, not emotions, not uh, whatever else this world wants to conjure up. Well, the pastor touched my forehead and said, I got the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. You're going to speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. That's how you know you got the Holy Ghost. That's overwhelming evidence. 2, 8, 9, 10, and 19 in the book of Acts. Come on. Overwhelming evidence. Paul talks about the infilling of the Holy Ghost and how it is essential. It's your seal of approval from heaven. It is also, okay, and that's what the Jews saw when the Gentiles got filled with the Holy Ghost, overwhelming seal that God accepted the Gentiles into this common salvation. Praise God. And, and what about Acts chapter 4, verse 12? Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. What is that name? Not titles, name. Father's a title. Son's a title. Holy Ghost is a title. You learn that in the third grade. What is a name? Jesus is the name. Satan hates that name. So he created counterfeit baptism through the Reformation churches, through counterfeit pastors, through translation trappers, through tumbleweed saints, 
through pinball wizard evangelists who say nothing and only want to line their pockets with your cash. That's it. Obey the apostles doctrine. Come on, come on, come up on the rock, huh? Come up on the rock that Jesus started, and he made Peter the apostle with the keys and authority. And the Bible says Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone, and built on him are the apostles and prophets. Not the Reformation churches. Come on. That's right. Now let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 4 in closing. Hallelujah. We want to bring you into the fold of the kingdom of heaven. And I didn't, you know, this isn't my doctrine. I didn't make it up. I obeyed it. That's right. I value the apostles, the people Jesus picked, okay? And Jesus shows us through the Word of God how he valued them, okay? So I value them, all right? I stand with Peter. I stand with Paul. I stand with Jude. I stand with James. I stand with all the nations that obeyed this precious doctrine that was once delivered to the saints. Praise God. No no angel has to come to me and say, hey, Dale, uh, here's some new glasses and some new tablets, and now I want you to make a new translation. No, I'm going to rebuke that spirit. I'm going to rebuke that whatever it is, delusional demon, and say, I've already, it's already been penned. It's already been declared. It's already been obeyed. You got to go in Jesus' name. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. That's right. Come on, let the fog come out of your mind. Let the illusion and the adopting of false doctrines and doctrines of the devil leave and step up on the rock the church that Jesus started and where the apostles abide and where they proclaim the truth to the nations. It's all here recorded, overwhelming evidence. Come up and be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on, come up. You, you love Jesus? Tell me now. Look into this uh, laptop phone screen and say, yes, I love Jesus. If you do, then guess what? Keep his commandments. What did the apostles do? They kept his commandments and were obedient. Come on up and be obedient. Let's get you baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Praise God. Get your sins remitted. Put on that robe, that character of Christ. Hallelujah. All right, in Ephesians chapter 4, Look at verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. That's what we're doing on the Bible podcast. We're promoting the one calling. We're calling out to you, okay? Because Paul says there's only one Lord in verse 5. One faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Praise God. So on the Bible podcast today, we wanted to shoo away the fog and the adoption of delusional, narcissistic, control, manipulating, shame, guilting, and devaluing doctrines that want to control you and line their pockets with your cash. We came to you today proclaiming the Apostles' Doctrine and submitting to you to adopt the Apostles' Doctrine as the salvation that not only did Jesus deliver the order to his disciples, but they went on and practiced what is the rule and what is required to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Until next time, place the word of God on the throne of your heart and obey the rule, the apostles' doctrine.